Welcome back to another steak experiment video here on Barbecue and Bottles. And today we're going to be testing the reverse sear steak method out on a Kamado versus the traditional cast iron sear method to see which one produces the better result. If you follow us on Instagram, we just dropped a picture of doing a cast iron steak in the Kamado and a lot of people said, well, you're not going to get the full smoky flavor of cooking in the Kamado through that method. And we wanted in part to put that to a test here and just see which of those outcomes we prefer. Whether we go down the reverse sear method, like people were suggesting, or whether we just do the traditional cast iron pan fry. To start with, of course you've always got to have a great quality piece of beef. And if you look at this, we've gone out and gotten some, what is equivalent here in Canada to some AAA prime and this is just absolutely incredibly marbled. Uh, you've got to pay up for quality beef like this, but that's certainly the best place to make an investment in your cook is just get a, go to your butcher, ask where the beef was raised, make sure you're getting something that's got this type of marbling all the way through the tenderness, the taste profile difference, you're gonna notice it, promise you. Then, as you can see here, we have put these steaks on drying rack. We've done almost a 48 hour dry brine with these. We'll drop a link in the video below as to how you actually dry brine. But just quickly, we put a bunch of sea salt, we use Maldon sea salt on the steaks, put those on a cookie sheet, drop that in the fridge for 48 hours, and the salt just really absorbs evenly throughout the whole steak. That process also help, helps to break down some of the fiber and the muscle tissues just for a more tender outcome. We think that's one of the biggest differences that we've tested here on the channel in terms of getting a really tender and well seasoned flavor profile on your steaks. So if you've got the, the time to do that, make sure you season your steaks 48 hours before. So now that we've covered off the prep here, let's go fire up the Kamado and get the reverse sear steak on the grill. So we've got our firebox loaded up with charcoal here. We're using the Kamado Joe Big Block. That, that just burns really long, provides a nice even consistent heat. And now let's light it up. You'll see we ignited that in three different places just to make sure we got even ignition across the charcoal. Now we're gonna put the lid down here, get the vents adjusted. So remember we're going for 225 to 250. So we're just gonna crack the vent open a little bit here. And if we wanna warm it up, we'll take the vent this way. If we wanna cool it down, we'll just tighten up that vent a little bit. But we're usually getting 225 right around this mark here. So we'll leave that there. And then with the bottom vent, we're just gonna scooch that open a little bit, just a tiny bit. And now we're gonna go back inside, give this probably 10 to 15 minutes to warm up, and then we'll see if we're at our temp. So now that we've got this lit, we're just gonna put in place the slow roller technology. So this is actually some new technology from uh, Kamado Joe that was invented by Harvard. And it's just supposed to make for a more even smoke flow around whatever protein you're cooking. So we'll see how that works. And then we're going to drop in their divide and conquer system here. And you'll see we've got the shelves up top. That's because we're going to do our steak indirect here. Then we'll remove the slow roller system, get this ripping hot. We'll put a cast iron pan on here and then we'll sear off both steaks. So with that, let's close down the lid and we'll give this a couple minutes to come up to temp. So we're at our desired temp here. So we're just gonna burp this open, get this up. Now we're gonna take one of the steaks and we're just gonna put it right here in the middle. Now we'll close this down. This at between 225 to 250, it's probably gonna take an hour. We're looking for the internal temp of the steak to get up to about 115, 120 degrees Fahrenheit. And in the meantime, we're gonna take this other steak back inside. And you know that time, it's gonna allow this other steak to get up to room temperature so that when we sear it in the cast iron pan, there's a better chance of getting that perfect medium rare from edge to edge. So while the steak's out reverse searing there, we've probably got 45 minutes to an hour. So we're gonna make some compound butter. We're just gonna need some salted butter, some garlic cloves, some chives, 
and some freshly ground black pepper. Now, the secret to this is actually to leave your butter out on the counter for at least an hour and ideally overnight before you make this just so that it's nice and soft and it's a little bit easier for you to mix once you bring the put the ingredients in it. We're gonna go in with some freshly cracked black pepper and just do this to taste. Now there's no magic to this. It's really easy to, to do this so I'd suggest over your steak cooks you just refine what mix of pepper, what mix of garlic and how much chives you actually like in your recipe. So there we go. Now we're just gonna go in with some garlic. And now I've got the chives. Let's just get rid of the ends like that. And now we'll cut this up nice and finely. And this is just gonna add some nice color and texture to the compound butter. It's really gonna elevate your steak game. This is something that you see at a lot of the really high-end steakhouses or just it doesn't even have to be that high-end and just brings a really nice flavor profile to your steak. And you know if you need butter for any other purpose, you've got an awesome garlic infused chive pepper butter that you can use. So now just take a fork and mash this all together. All right, so once you've got this mixed together, you're gonna to wanna to take some parchment paper like this and just put a gob of it down right in the middle of one of the edges here. Now, the secret is then to roll this into a tight roll. And to do that, just slowly work your way like this. And it's not gonna be perfectly uniform at the moment. But once you get your roll done, now just twist on each of the ends and that's gonna push the butter into the center and give it a perfect cylindrical shape. And now this you can put in your fridge. It'll keep for at least a week. You can put it in your freezer and then take it out whenever you need it. All right, it's been about an hour here, so let's check the temp on the steak. We're at about 128, so we shot a little bit past where we wanted it to be. So now we're just gonna take this off and bring that inside. Now we're just gonna prep our grill for the sear. So to do that, I'm just gonna pull this out Pull out the slow roller. Now we're gonna open up the vents all the way and just get this ripping hot. Get this back in here for our cast iron pan. Now we'll get our cast iron pan on here warming up. Just like that, close down the lid. All right, we've got this grill up to temp here. You can see we've got it reading 600 degrees Fahrenheit in the dome. Now let's crack this, burp it. Now we're gonna check what the temperature is in the skillet. So we've got our infrared thermometer. I'm gonna point that in the middle here. We're looking for at least 500 degrees Fahrenheit. We've got this ripping hot, as you can see. So now we're gonna go in with a little bit of oil. Now we're using avocado oil because it's got such a high smoke point as opposed to extra virgin olive oil. We'll just put a very generous amount in the pan. And now, it's gonna be time to get this all around the pan, a nice even coating, and then let's drop our steak in. Now we're gonna want that to sit there and sear untouched for probably three to four minutes before we flip it. And that's really gonna let the mired reaction just caramelize the bottom of that steak and give it that beautiful crust that we know and love. And then when we flip it, we'll come in with the rosemary, garlic, and butter that we've got on the side. And that's when we'll add in the other steak that we've been reverse searing. And we'll make sure both of them get that same kind of garlic, butter, rosemary aromatics plus the reverse sear, of course, will have the extra smoke. 
All right, just look at the crust that we got on this guy. A nice char. And now we're gonna add in the reverse sear steak. We're gonna add in the butter. And be generous with the butter here, folks. There's no reason not to be. Add in the rosemary, the garlic cloves. Just beautiful. Now we're just gonna be basting these steaks here, making sure we're getting all that garlic, butter, rosemary up onto the steaks, ensuring the steaks get infused with that flavor. Beautiful. Now I'll flip the reverse sear steak over and just look at that crust. Absolutely gorgeous. Perfect, 126, so it's time to pull these guys off. Just look at that beautiful sear. Absolutely incredible. Another great sear on this side too. Look at that. So let's close this down and head inside. Now we've got the steaks inside resting. We're gonna to wanna to put a bit of that garlic compound butter that we made on top of these. And now we're just gonna slice some discs. And now we're gonna let these rest untented in foil for the next 10 minutes. Untented because we have these indoors. They're not gonna lose a lot of heat and we don't want the tenting to just steam these steaks any further because we don't want to ruin that amazing crust that we created. Now, if we we're doing this outdoors and the ambient temperature outside was really cold, then maybe we consider tenting, but not today. We want to let these rest, let the juices redistribute throughout the steaks so that when we cut into them, we're getting that juicy outcome that we're looking for. All right, we've had these steaks inside and resting for the last 10 minutes. And just so that you can follow along, this is the one that was done reverse sear method with this, the brief sear in the cast iron pan at the end. And then this is the one that we just seared in the cast iron skillet all the way through. So let's slice into these and see how we did. Now we'll take a few pieces out from the center of each of these, just so that we can judge how we did here. Now I think you can see on the reverse seared steak here, there definitely is more of an even doneness all the way through. It's not quite wall to wall, but I think we had that pan potentially a little bit too hot. And in fact, I know we did. When you look over at this, the steak that was seared in the cast iron pan, there's large walls of gray before you get to that medium rare interior. And frankly, that's because I think we started with the pan around 650 degrees Fahrenheit. We should have been closer to 500 degrees Fahrenheit, to be honest. We've got the smoking point of avocado oil at 520 degrees Fahrenheit. And it just allows for a little bit less burning on the crust and more of just that traditional mired reaction and brownness that we're looking for. So overall on doneness here, I'm totally gonna give it to the reverse sear steak. Like that's the whole theory is that you get more even wall to wall medium rare and it definitely beat out the cast iron skillet in that regard. Now let's go in for the taste test here. Just gonna slice some of these pieces. All right, grab one with the fat cap. Mm. The seasoning on that is beautiful. That 48 hour dry brine, you definitely get salt all the way through the piece. There isn't any overpowering of the salt or when you get a salt crystal that's on the surface of your steak that you just bite into. And again, it's that overpowering flavor. Not at all here. That's really perfect. That's what we were looking for. Really nice crust too, there's a good crunch, but not so much of the smoky flavor, right? And that's the other thing that the reverse sear should deliver for us, is just a bit more of that smokiness that we're looking for from a charcoal, charcoal cooked steak. So let's try this and see if it lives up to its reputation. Mm, I'm gonna get two bites here. Oh my gosh, that was absolutely incredible. 
you can really taste the smokiness of the charcoal and similar seasoning profile, nothing overpowering, evenness all the way through, super tender. And you know what? I think overall, I'm gonna declare the winner here, one that's just based on your personal preference. Now, if you like that smoky flavor and we have some people in our household that don't, then if you like it, you're gonna to wanna to go down the reverse sear method. If you don't, and all you're really looking for is a delicious steak, just like a steakhouse outcome in your home, then go down the route of searing and cast iron and you'll just get that butterly, buttery garlic rosemary profile that's absolutely amazing with a super crust. So if you like this video, give us a like below, smash that like button, consider subscribing to the channel if you like this video and you thought it was worthwhile because we've got more of these steak experiments coming up and we've got we've done about a dozen of them we've got another dozen to come and as always let us know what you're interested in seeing drop something in the comments below if you want to see a specific steak experiment if you want us to cook other proteins like brisket or pork butt or you name it just let us know we're here to create content for you guys thanks for tuning in